everyone, I'm back again and today I'm bringing you a special message that has been inspired by the amazing interview that I got to have with the incredible Alison Armstrong yesterday. So I hope you guys uh, got to check that interview out. If you haven't checked it out already, it might be that you might have missed it because I'm not, I didn't, I'm not doing these interviews with the Limitless Potential podcast. I'm not doing them on my personal page. I'm doing them over on the Limitless Potential page. So if you guys aren't following it, you might not see those interviews and I've got a ton lined up for you, so I don't want you to miss out. Um, but yesterday, I got to interview Alison Armstrong. If you don't know who she is uh, and you want to be successful in intimate relationship or just in understanding yourself and the opposite sex, you definitely want to check out her work. So um, go check out the interview on Limitless Potential and, uh, and then check out more of her work, go for a big deep dive. But basically, I wanted to share this particular message with you guys today because of one thing that Alison shared with us on that interview yesterday. I mean, she shared a ton um, and she really opened up and I was really um, grateful for the depth that she went into um, that I really wasn't sure it was going to take that angle when she spoke about the um, passing away of her husband um, of 23 years just a year ago. It was very sudden and how she's navigated that and transformed her grief into gratitude. You know, not in an idealistic, um, pushing away the feelings kind of way, but actually in a really legitimate way in her own personal development and growth. And so if you haven't seen it, please do go and check it out because there's so much value in it. But let's get into today's message. So today's message is nothing is all good and nothing is all bad. And I want to talk about the metaphor that Alison Armstrong shared with us in that interview yesterday. So basically what she shared, um, which was coming from a question I think I asked about um, like when you are feeling like you've lost somebody in your life, maybe you have had somebody pass away or you've gone through a breakup and no matter what side of the equation, whether you're doing the breaking up or you're the one being broken up with, you still go through a grieving process with that as well. And I was talking to her about, you know, how did she get to this point of um, feeling so much of grief and then and loss and then getting to a state of gratitude. And one of the things that she explained is it's kind of like a hand. So most people think that they can just get the front of the hand, right? The support. Oh, isn't that nice? And they don't realize that they also, the front of the hand also comes with the back of the hand, right? Back backhand, you know, it's not that nice, right? Nobody wants a backhand. We all, we all want the loving support of a front hand, but we don't want the backhand, right? And so basically what happens though, is we, you know, see the front of the hand of the person that we're in relationship with or anything that we're being idealistic about or all just seeing all good, no bads, right? In particular, in the starting pl place of a relationship, right? You see all good, no bad, all front of hand, no back end, right? And basically, when we do that, <clears throat> we're only seeing half of the equation, right? We're, we're seeing all the good, but we're missing the other side that's always there and it's always available to bring us back into balance in reality. So some of the some some of the examples that she gave were you know um having a partner that is super thoughtful. All right? That's like the front of the hand. Oh, I like that. He's really thoughtful or she's really thoughtful. And then realizing usually later down the track you usually realize the other side of the hand, right? The back hand comes when they can't make a bloody decision right? So that was one of the examples that she shared. And there's all these front of the hand, back of the hands going on the whole time, right? And it's not just in our intimate relationships. This is in all life circumstances, even what's sweeping the globe right now with COVID, right? There is a definite, very clear back of the hand, right? All the bad things that are happening, but don't let anything allow you to have a lopsided perception of reality because all bad or all good is not realistic, 
right? We want to be in equilibrium. We want to be in realism. And so we need to balance ourselves out. So I'm going to give you an example um, from one of my clients' lives. And I'm going to give you a, an example from my own personal life because we, we have this opposite thing going on, which is really interesting. And I was thinking about it just earlier today. So let's have a look at it. All right. So I had one of my clients reaching out to me yesterday and letting me know, uh, that they were struggling with a sense of disconnection from everybody in their lives. They were feeling really disconnected. They were feeling um, like they just really wanted to avoid everybody in their lives. Like they just wanted to run away. They wanted to cut people out. Um, and they were having this real struggle where they felt like they had no real relation with anybody in their life, right? And um, And basically, what was happening if we use this metaphor uh, from uh, Alison Armstrong is that they were focused on the back of the hand with everything, right? They were interacting with people and just seeing all the backhands, all the challenge, all the negative, all the differences, right? And if, if you're seeing all of that, right, if that's where your focus is, no wonder you want to run away, you want to avoid, you want to cut people out. And it also stems from our relationship with self, right? So there's different angles that we can take on this. But basically, um, they were also giving themselves the backhand, right? When we are projecting judgment onto other people, it's really stemming from the inside out, right? So this particular amazing human being uh, was having a lot of backhand challenges within themselves, a lot of self-judgment. And so when you have a lot of self-judgment, when you're just seeing all the backhands about yourself and no front hand, you know, basically what happens is you think that everybody outside of you is going to see those bad things. You can only see the bad things in others or you're seeing comparison and you're pushing your down, yourself down even more, seeing more and more backhands of yourself, right? And so basically there was a couple of different things going on for this client. And uh, and those were a couple of the things, right? There was a lot of self-judgment, a lot of backhands towards the self, and also a lot of backhands towards other people, seeing all the differences, seeing no connection, seeing no relation, wanting to avoid and cut off, right? That was the end result. And so um, what I invited this amazing client of mine to do was to firstly be aware of that. Firstly, be aware of how you're focusing on all the differences in the people that you're engaging with and do the other side, right? How we end our own suffering is we bring ourselves back into balance. So if we're hyper-focused on the backhand, what we need to do is find and focus on the front of the hand that's always available, right? The backhand comes with the front hand. You can't have a hand without both sides, right? In, in the words of Alison Armstrong. And so basically doing that and also noticing the backhands going on within themselves because how we are treating ourselves, you know, is ultimately how we're seeing, um, we're feeling other people are going to see us, right? All those self all that self-judgment makes us retreat into ourselves, right? We don't want the world to see, you know, how bad we are because that's what we're focused on. And so when we have high levels of self-judgment, we want to practice the other side of self-acceptance. And sometimes self-acceptance starts not with just trying to see how many brilliant things there are about you, because that might be too much of a leap at the point that you're at. What you need to do is just acknowledge the judgment, bring light to it, and acknowledge that it's okay, all right? Because you're learning self-acceptance. I learned this from this strategy from a couple of brilliant coaches I had earlier this year. And um, basically, it really helped me personally in um, owning my own emotional states and owning when I was operating in ways that were taking me away from what I ultimately wanted to create in my life. Um, at that time, it was focused on higher levels of self-belief. And so when I noticed self-doubt coming Coming up, I acknowledged it. I said, <clears throat> I'm doubting myself again, and that's okay, right? When you make it okay, it loosens its grip because I'm learning 
to be more self-believing, all right? And in the case of my client, you know, he would be able to say, because I'm learning self-acceptance, I'm learning to accept myself more, right? So those are a couple of the things that, you know, this client, I can use as an example to see what happens when we focus on all backhands in any sort of relationship dynamics or within ourselves. And I want to compare and contrast it to um, a, tr a challenge in my life, which is ultimately uh, been my battle with idealism. You guys have heard this story, um, you know, my battle with idealism a lot over the last few months. Um, it's been a huge part of my growth journey to acknowledge how idealistic I can be, which has its has its front hand, but also has its backhand. And the backhand that it could have for me when I'm hyper focused on idealism is ultimately um it leads me to sacrificing my own needs for the potential of something that could be um an intimate relationship it could be in my business it could be in um in all all different realms right and so basically what I had to do was realize that I was hyper focusing on the front of the hand right all the goods, all the positives, all the possibilities, all the idealistic kind of futuristic projections, right? And so that could lead me to sacrificing the present moment, not doing the things that I need to do, um, that look after myself, not having my needs met in relationship, all sorts of things, right? Um, kind of putting everything important on hold for some idealistic projection of reality. And so what my personal journey with this has been is I've had to learn to find and focus on the back of the hand, right? Where's the back of the hand in this experience rather than just hyper-focusing on the front of the hand? Because either side, there's no right, there's no better or worse. If you tend to hyper-focus on the good or you hyper-focus on the bad, Either way, you're out of balance. You're in an in extremism, and both cause suffering, right? Rather in the pre either in the present moment or in your future or wherever you go, right? Because at the end of the day, like Alison Armstrong expressed in her interview yesterday, you can't have a hand without both the front and the back. Okay, so really what that means is today's message, nothing is all good and nothing is all bad. Learn to see the balance in everything. And that means within yourself, you know, you're not all good and you're not all bad, right? You're in equal parts, you know, a blessing and a curse, right? Um, to everybody, you know, so you've got the whole spectrum of human traits, human behaviors, um, human emotion, everything. You're both altruistic and narcissistic, right? And the moment you're able to realize this and bring yourself into balance, and I'm not saying you just get it like this. This is a practice, an ongoing practice of self awareness and realization and transcendence in the ultimate end game. But when you can give yourself that kind of permission and opening and freedom to just be the whole spectrum of who you are, basically what you're, you're able to do at that point is give the people in your life the same luxury, the opening, the freedom, the space to just be all of who they are without your judgments. And it's a more peaceful existence because you're not just projecting how you want people to change for you to be okay, right? And trying to get this false sense of security and control. No, you're at peace because you find balance and you know all those amazing good things are balanced out with the bad things, if you want to term it that way. Or you could just look at everything for the full holistic spectrum that it is. Everything is a whole hand. It's not just the back and it's not just the front. And if you want to end your own suffering, you just realize that and you find the other side and you stop operating in extremism, either in the same way my client was, you know, going for all bad, all differences, all the negatives, all the disconnection, or you, or you fall on my side of the spec spectrum of extremism, which is all good, no bad, see all the positives, see all the potential, see all the benefits, no drawbacks, right? And so both are not healthy, right? You want to be able to notice where you naturally sit 
Are you more optimistic or are you more pessimistic? And then basically just noticing that and building out the other side. Build the muscle of the other side to set yourself free and just realize and remind yourself that nothing is all good and nothing is all bad, even the most traumatic experiences that are had by people in this life. If you really study people who've had seriously traumatic experiences in their lives from the whole spectrum, those who have achieved greatness say that they've done so because, not in spite of those traumatic experiences, okay? So just to have that balance because we can get very caught up and very opinionated about what's right and what's wrong, but just take it back to balance always and know that you suffer because you create a, a resistance to reality. And I'm not saying that to condone um, traumatic experiences and all those sorts of things that absolutely need a therapeutic approach and we need to own and acknowledge what's right and what's wrong and what's happened to us and what hasn't happened to us and all that sort of stuff. But I'm just saying when you get to a point where you've healed from the past, you've done the therapeutic approach, be emotionally intelligent enough to know that you get to select the experience that you have and it starts with bringing yourself back into balance and noticing when you have an extremism. All right, so that is my message for you guys today. I definitely want to check in with you guys and see who's been able to join me. Um, so drop me some comments. Let me know where in the world you're tuning in from. Have you got any questions or comments or words of wisdom? Everything. I love getting to connect with you guys. So let me check in. I have got uh, Mark in the house and Tony and Paul. Thank you for those kind words. And uh, Judy's here and Bill's back. I love it. And Daryl from the Great White North. Always great to have you, Daryl. And Anne's here. Hello to you, beautiful. And uh, Bill, much love to you. And Choppy's here and Marn and Vereen. And Bill, whatever you, oops, whatever you focus on, uh, you get more of. <sighs> So, so true. Absolutely. You've got it. And uh, Josie's here as well. Oh, and also on top of that, whatever you resist persists, right? So um, if you are um, really resisting reality, you're just going to invite more opportunities and experiences to you to wake you up. And it's not going to be pleasurable because if you don't take it upon yourself to balance yourself out, the whole world around you is set up to do just that but it won't be on your own accord. It'll feel like you're being forced, right? And so just take ownership and responsibility for your own balancing out. And you know, the best person I've learned this from is definitely our friend, Dr. John D. Martini. Even when I get to connect with him, every single time I meet up with him, I kind of gush because I just love his work and he's been um, so instrumental in my own personal development and growth and just one of the most genuine down to earth souls who has such wisdom and I know every single thing he does is done with heart, right? Um, so I, I just love getting to meet him and every single time I'm reminded, oh, that's right. I'm not talking to your everyday human being. I'm talking to Dr. John D. Martini who humbles himself and, uh, you know, make sure that all my seeing all the positive, positive, positives um, gets kind of balanced out with, hey, you know what? I'm a bit like this too, right? And I'm like, oh yeah, I get it. I get it. So, you know, learn, we learn from the greats about how to balance out as well. And uh, Josie's here and Adrian and Anita and Tim's here and Gail. Awesome. And Aaron and Kamal love the words of wisdom. I'm so grateful to hear that you found some words of wisdom here, Kamal. Great to have you here. And Mark's here as well and Kapsu. So awesome to see each and every one of you guys. I really hope today's message was just a good reminder. And if you didn't get a chance to watch um, the interview I did on Limitless Potential with the incredible Alison Armstrong, you can can do so on the Limitless Potential um, Facebook page. Um, and I hope that you glean as much value and wisdom as I did uh, being able to record that for you. And these interviews that I'm doing are happening once a week. Next week, guys, I'm having on the show a man by the name of Larry White. 
Now, he is known as the Zen Recovering Narcissist, apparently the world's only recovering narcissist. So this is going to be a really fascinating interview that I have lined up with you guys. And it's going to be held on Friday, 9 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time next week. Usually the interviews are going to be at 9 a.m. on a Thursday, but I had to do some rescheduling. Catherine Woodward Thomas was supposed to be next week and we've had to postpone. She's just moved into a new house and we've got to postpone her for a couple of weeks. And then, um, and so I was able to get um, the amazing Larry White, who's an author um, and yeah, the world's only recovering narcissist apparently. So that's going to be very interesting. And we've slotted him in for Friday, 9 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, Thursday evening for you guys in the States. Um, and I hope you guys can join us live over on the Limitless Potential Facebook page, all going live. And also you can subscribe to the Limitless Limitless Potential podcast on iTunes. So, um, so excited about everything that's coming up for you guys. Can't wait to share it. And I want to thank each and every one of you guys for showing up and joining me live today. You are so appreciated. I hope this was a value. And just remember, nothing is all good and nothing is all bad, right? Look at everything as the whole hand, right? Not just the front, not just the back, right? It's the whole hand. It's always in balance, all right? And any suffering is um, dictated really by either side of the spectrum that you're sitting in an extreme. So be your own coach, get yourself out of suffering, and ultimately enter a state of peace and non-resistance, um, a great place to live your life from if you can get there. And um, again, just want to thank you guys. And uh, Caesar, thank you so much for your kind words from Mexico. Great to have you. And as always, guys, my message for you is to go out there and live authentically, to love deeply and to contribute meaningfully. Can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Much love.